and welcome to another episode of Out on a Limb podcast with your hosts, Will and myself, Allison, and we have Samantha, as always. And we are bringing to you today the Bradys, Dennis and Christina, who are coming to us from Missouri, uh, are some recent friends of ours, beautiful people, beautiful family. Mm -hmm. And Christina is a beyond quantum healing practitioner as am I. And so we sort of met on the forum. Thanks to Candace Crawl Goldman. Um, you're also practicing quantum connect, which we'll get into. Um, and one of the reasons we wanted to have a conversation with the Brady's is because as you, you all probably know, I wrote a book about my experience, um, leaving the mainstream Christian church or religion and entering into a greater spiritual understanding. And that was the journey within. Um, Christina got a hold of that book and we have since talked about how, uh, I guess, important that book was to your journey as well, because they extricated themselves from the Mormon church. And so we want to have some conversations with people who are expanding that box, expanding the religious teachings, not necessarily having to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but just understanding that there is uh, so much more um, when you expand the box and the paradigm and um, allow yourself to have real uh, conversations with the metaphysical beings, with angels, with guides, with your God, whoever and whatever that is. And so I think it's real important for us to hear these stories because there are a lot of people who still are kind of stuck in that paradigm and mm -hmm. are afraid, afraid to explore out of it, ex afraid to leave it because of their family and all of that. And so I think it's helpful to hear these conversations. So welcome, Christina and Dennis. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. For sure. So yeah. why, why don't we start with that aspect? Um Tell us a little bit about your background with the Mormon church um, and where you started to sort of question, where did that come in? Uh, background, <clears throat> background for me, um, Dennis was raised in it pretty much from age four, right? And then for me, it was around age 17 that I learned about it um, through Dennis because we started dating and his family was like, well, let us introduce you to what we know. And I had a little bit of religion when growing up, but not a lot, not very much. And so he introduced me and I jumped on board thinking, oh, I belong somewhere. It was more of a belonging, I feel like. And so, yeah, that's, then we got married uh, about a month after I was baptized and uh, the big, big brother thing probably was important for you too. Yeah. Because I was introduced as Jesus Christ being an older brother and that we all lived in this pre-mortal life together. And then our goal here was to be tried and tested and then return. So that was kind of where it got me. I'm like, I have this big brother. I'm a, I've got connection. I have a belonging. I belong somewhere. And that really resonated with me, made me excited. And that's, I was sold. Like, that's great. This is where I want to be. So that was me. Yeah, for me, four years old, so I didn't know any better. <clears throat> um, but when I started to come to the knowledge of this probably isn't right for me, hmm. was all the consistencies, right? And then stepping back, and we we left the religion setting for about five years. Mm -hmm. And actually, we grew closer and had some incredible experiences when we separated from that. I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, I, I don't know how much detail you want, but I'll give you a story. So we ran a construction business. Um and there was a guy that came in. He was from Philippines. The Philippines. His name was Aka, AKA, couple S. And he came in and I, I did the interview with him. And he was like, I I need to work for you. Okay, well, we've heard that before. So anyway, he he was just he had this light about him 
that holy cow set him apart from anyone that I had ever met. So I'm like, as he got talking, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're going to be right, right beside me in the truck. So <laughs> he taught us some unreal things. He, um, he brought me to the Akashic records. Did I say that right? Akashic. Yeah. I had no idea what that was. Um, in meditation, he brought me into a mountain and showed me anyway lots lots of different things um he healed our home he blessed our home he um he sat with me and said dennis this business is going to fall apart um you're going to struggle with family and within months so i've done my job here there's a whole lot more i, I wish we had more time but um, you're going to struggle a little bit and it'll just be a, for a short time, but my, my work's basically done here. So he left just as quick as he came in a month later, business comp and we were doing incredible business tanked in a month, family fell apart. There was some, some interesting stuff that happened with business and family. And I went through a pretty big depression i would say if you were looking for your dark night of the soul yeah, moment that was it because <laughs> it. it was dramatic i mean hearts broken like there was a lot going on so and not just on our side but i on both sides but to have that experience outside of religion mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not gonna uh, discount religion or or it's place in people's life. I think it, there is a place mm -hmm. and it's, it's a way to show people that there is a higher power, but there's also restrictions with religion. You can only get to that higher power through a brick and mortar or through another man or woman. And it's, I didn't know any better. We didn't know any better until we met Akka. AKA. AKA. Right. Isn't that appropriate? Right. It's, you know, we hear these stories about guardian angels just showing up and staying for a time and then leaving and disappearing and, you know, having a profound effect on us. And that's so obvious that that's what happened. And it was perfect timing because God knows what would have happened to you guys had you encountered all of those struggles without the pre-warning, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we wish that we could have those warnings all the time. Where's AKA now? <laughs> but yeah, he blessed our life like in multiple layers. And that time we were able to, <clears throat> I would set the kids down outside of religion, right? And we have four children. We have four. So, mm -hmm. breakfast. <laughs> and we would set them down. And I, I had no idea what I was doing. I just felt the call to do it. So we set them around in a circle and I had them all close their eyes and we went on this journey together and all of the kids to this day can tell you exactly in detail the journey that we went on yeah. the water the mist spraying in our face the coolness the the experience of flying they were there wow they were and that's at a time where we had you know, Aka, Aka had also, because we, we were some members of this church and Aka had had some interest there, like, well, well, tell me about it. And, you know, our kids were, we had two that were of the age to be baptized and we were getting ready to kind of baptize them. We had fallen away and we trying to find our path again, like, eh, does this religion play a part? What do we do? How do we connect? And he came to bapt the baptisms of our two of our kids. And he's like, what is this yellow light? And that was when Dennis was, you know, in the Mormon religion, they do baptism and then they do a confirmation, a laying on of hands where they give the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so at that time, he said, there's this yellow light. I don't know what it is. And there, and he was in tears. 
and it was connected. So then we're still like conflicted, like, okay, there's something with religion. Yeah. Anyways. Yes. That was an interesting experience too, because <clears throat> we're trying to be good Mormons. Right. But we know we we're being pulled to this, this truth of something else. And it's, it was pretty conflicting. Like we're, we're seeing the light within the Mormon religion, but we also see light outside it. And how can there be light outside of this religion? It's impossible, right? Because there's nothing else that can be true. And then Aka <laughs> came and he's sitting there when, when Brian was getting confirmed, right? <clears> of <throat> the confirmation. And he just broke down. He started crying and he said, I know what the Holy Ghost looks like. <laughs> Which so goes to show that God can be with you or the Holy Spirit can be with you no matter where you are, because you had some profound experiences within the Christian church yep. as well. And so, yep. again, this isn't about dissing the Christian church or the nope. Mormon church or any other religion. It's about understanding that it's bigger than that. It's bigger than any of us can ever imagine. Mm -hmm. But I want to get back to, Dennis, what you said about uh, the little niggles that were starting to infiltrate in your mind that maybe this wasn't the best place for you, the Mormon church. So tell us what kinds of doubts were you having or what were the inconsistencies you were seeing? I have over a thousand pages if you want me to read you <laughs> all of the questions I had through my journey. But um, just the inconsistencies, even at the, the foundation of the creation of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, most members... <clears throat> They have blinders on, right? And they they only see what they're told. So, I mean, it went from just the foundation, the original foundation of Joseph Smith being, um, having his first experience when he asked about what religion is correct. And it went from a being that appeared to Jesus Christ, and then it went from Jesus Christ to it was Jesus Christ and the Father. Um, so just the inconsistencies, even at the beginning, and um, I do research and I dig. So, um, you know, un unfortunately or fortunately, I I did, and I found lots of inconsistencies even throughout the the evolution of Mormonism. And I would, I would add to that, that it wasn't, it, you know, that that's a part of it, but there's also this, Dennis has this innate personality that following, following the crowd is not his thing. It's not. And no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just, that's not him. He's an, a think outside the box. If there's different ways to do it, I'm going to try it and see if it's easier, see if it works better for me, see how it fits. And so he's always been like that. So even in, I would say when our kids were really little, um, there's been questions in his mind, like, why do they do that? And why, why are these people going to church and being this way? And then they're this way. But I think that we had to have personally, uh, shaking. And so because he doesn't stay in that box that people want him to stay in, you know, he always, they always like, okay, there's that Dennis Brady, you know, Don't what's preach he any false religion in, in <laughs> Sunday but, school? Okay. Yeah. What's he going to say? We're putting him at the pulpit. What's he going to say today? <laughs> Let's not call him Dennis, Dennis for the questions in Sunday school. <laughs> because he would question things. And so that, that I'm hoping that we're getting to your question a little bit. Uh, I mean, we can dig in Allison and uh, there's lots of particulars that we could go into. Um, it becomes quite the rabbit trail though. Yeah, I, I completely hear you. I think um, the point is that a lot of us within the Christian church, and for me, it started around age 13 that I started questioning my Episcopal priest some things that didn't make sense to me. And everybody on an intellectual level who's in a religion understands there are things that don't make sense. And you're told to just ignore that. Don't worry about it. 
it's not important. Uh, just follow along with these teachings and you'll be okay. And they scare you out of it. And so you just learn that if you want the goodness that comes with the religion, because there is goodness there, then you just learn to accept the stuff that it can't be answered. And I, I think a lot of people struggle with that. So I'm thank you for sharing that. But uh, Christina, to uh, your side of it, I remember you saying that, and I had this problem too, and it took me years to get over it, was the anger. The anger at feeling controlled, the anger at feeling that you weren't told the truth, the anger that you believe things that weren't necessarily true and that they squash um, your ability to understand your own essence and divinity. So tell me about that and, and have you overcome it and how did you overcome it? Um, yeah, the connection, you know, when you you feel like I've done everything, I've I've completed A, B, C, D, I've gone all the way to Z, I've done everything that I'm supposed to do here. And then learn some things that you're you're like, wait a minute. Uh, it shatters that belief system that you had that you were so sold on and then I, for me it was like disappointing and I had to question okay if this if this was false what else is false and that sent me into a bit of a spin like oh I have to figure this all out on my own now I thought you guys had this and you were teaching me and you've lied to me but more than that I swallowed it so it's kind of there's this, there's a lot of different emotions that build up in you. Oh, my kids. Yeah. Again, let's not meant not to mention that I raised all four kids all the way through missions, you know, their, their missions to. Which they had to pay for themselves. Yeah. There's so much <laughs> that, yeah, that you come to that you're like, wow, I gave money. I gave my time. I've spent every ounce of effort to follow. And now I'm questioning what's truth. What is truth? Mm. Are these scriptures true? Should I read them? Should I not? Oh my gosh. Is there a God? You know, it, it shook my foundation and Dennis had already come to grips on quite a few things that he was like, so it didn't shake him at the same time. It was shaking me. He had already he had been taking bite-sized bits and it's like, I got the whole pie in the face that one time and just was like, and not that he wasn't planting little seeds, but I would be like, no, 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 we're not even supposed to talk about that. We're not talking about that because we're not supposed to talk about that. Oh, we are not reading that either because we're not supposed to read that. So that's kind of where I came. I from. was reading that. He was reading that. I was the one who's like, no, stop. That's not even produced by the church. Like, don't even look at that. So for me, it it was shattering. And I had to then go, it's okay. Like, that's all programming. And it's okay to think differently. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to sit down and meditate and explore in a different way than what you were taught but breaking down my conditioning of this is how you do it and there's like don't don't go outside of that was a challenge for me but I was a rule follower and check all the boxes and so it was even harder I feel like for me where Dennis was like nah just you know Think outside the box a little bit. Anything, <laughs> question everything. Anything in the box says nothing <laughs> and is nothing. I, I have a question because you're saying that as you, as um, as a wife, as a woman, but as a mom, how do you go through that? Because you've really conditioned, you know, it's been conditioned on you. You've turned around and conditioned it on your kids. And, you know, of course, Dennis was part of that too, but but now you've shattered all of this. So how do you deal with them? Good question. Yeah, good. Because, you know, we, I don't, in a high demand religion, like, like the one we're coming from was Monday nights are family nights, you know, Wednesday nights are church nights, the youth activities, Friday nights are date nights. And Sundays we're going to spend three hours in church every Sunday. And so minimum, 
yeah, unless you're got callings, unless you do this and that it. So yes, our whole life, that was, that was what we did. We let, we eat, sleep, breathe church. Yeah. I, I think the important question here is how did that relate to the kids? How did it transfer down to the kids and, yeah. and viewing it as a mother? Uh, as a mom. Um, yeah. That guilt hit you too. Like, bad because you're like how do how am I even going to tell them that I've had a change of heart like do I crush them how are we telling them anything and this happened at a time that was right before our daughter wanted to go into the temple and be married and that meant that if we came forth and told them what we were feeling and going through we couldn't go to that temple wedding and so we knew, we knew there was this struggle. I can lie, I can be inauthentic, and I can just go, or we can set them down. And I can't, I can't be inauthentic here. I have got to just, we just have to tell them. The good thing, though, I will say is they were raised by both of us. And so Dennis always had them question things. You know, just because Bishop so-and-so says something doesn't mean that's truth. You feel it out yourself. And so because the balance is great here and Dennis uh, thinks outside of it, he taught him to question. And they know and were raised by both of us. Mm -hmm. I don't question a lot or in the beginning I wasn't. So you do know. <laughs> I great. question a little bit more now. <laughs> I, I think to go along with that, if I can, um, we saw our children in two years, all four of them, get married and start having children. So our family multiplied in two years by three. Mm. So I was sitting with this saying, how can I set in authenticity and in truth going forward as a as a papa mm -hmm. how can i do that i taught my kids there was okay kids there is no such thing as santa claus <laughs> there's no such thing as the easter bunny come on it's it's so i tried to teach them truth now i'm a papa mm -hmm. and i have grandkids looking at papa for truth so what is truth? I took my kids on an adventure that they can tell you in detail. That was truth to me, and it's truth to them. It's how powerful the mind is. Yeah. So. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. So <clears throat> one of the things that you mentioned and why it's so hard for people to break free is because when you leave a religious uh, environment, you're leaving your friends, you're leaving your family, you're leaving everything you ever knew. You have a community built in, you have babysitters, you have things to do on the evenings, you have a schedule, you have everything. And so when you leave that, you're not just leaving the religious aspect of it, you're leaving a family, a community. And it's so difficult to walk away from that. But tell us how that worked for you in terms of my understanding it now, after this um, has been many, many years that we've moved on. Uh, but when people start to fall away, other people fill in, your new family fills in and experiences come in and it's just as fulfilling, if not more so. So tell us how that looked in your life. Yeah. So it started with our kids started getting married. And so when we, when we finally came and had everybody, we sat them down and told them, um, our kids had also married somebody in the church all four of them. So this, this trickles. So yes, with community, with family, like then we are completely, we're breaking away. What does that mean? And our kids, you know, some of them, some of them panicked and some of them didn't, but yeah, that separation, like now, what do you do on Sunday? <laughs> so I touched on a little bit earlier when we separated from this high demand religion, AKA came into our life. Mm -hmm. And 
there wasn't a more powerful being to came in that came into our presence at the time that could have showed us what he showed us. And it, it goes in multiple levels what he showed us, but like it was home. It was home. And if I would have went to a metaphysical fair, I would have said, I, I, you know, because I just didn't understand it. We but actually he, did. Yeah, we actually did. But <laughs> he came into to our existence, into our plane of existence to teach us some unbelievable things. But um, Leonardo da Vinci said, I woke up only to see the rest of the world asleep. And that's what it felt like to us. Mm -hmm. right? Like <laughs> we were something unbelievable and we're looking around to hundreds of different religions that play the same part in an individual's life to, to hold them in a place without letting them expand into something that's unbelievable. And we, I've personally had unexplainable things that's, that's happened that, um, I don't know that I'll ever know in this life. Yeah. But there's so much more. And and leaving leaving friends or telling friends, okay, we listen, we're stepping away. The good thing was at the time that we chose this, we had been gone, like we had moved a few times. And so where we had planted our kids and, and they grew up at, we were no longer in that space. And so we had just moved back into this area that everybody knew us, but we hadn't fully, fully engaged back into church. So it was a little easier in our part, but then when you bump into people and you're like, Hey, hi, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, with the religion, with, with this religion, it, it's what you eat, what you drink, what you wear. Like it is everything. It is not just about, oh, I saw them. No, they know when you're not living the way you're supposed to live because everything is shifting. So when we came back and we made this decision, <clears throat> Allison will, like, this is really important. So when we came back, we made that decision. We sat them down with the kids mm -hmm. when we sat down and told them. Um, it was a, a little like, where do we go from here? Like we're we're making the decision. We're we're moving on. Christina found this book, <laughs> Allison. <laughs> she said now. <clears throat> I have no idea. And the, the connection is pretty deep here, I think. But she came out, I was doing something and she's like, hey, they made this tree house. We have to go to this thing, I think. And like, what do you feel? And I'm instantly, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and, <laughs> and let's drive so we can really talk about this on the way there and back. Oh, and oh yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, you have to, you have to put, put a time frame on this because this, ha this wasn't, like tens years ago. This is just within the last three, four years, wasn't it? Not even. Not even. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah. So you guys drove, you drove all the way from Missouri. To here for a weekend retreat, for a one day retreat. But this was after she found the book and read, yeah. and read yeah. the book and read parts, I guess, to Dennis or whatever. So tell us that story. That's fun. Oh my God. So it started with, you know, connecting with, um, with, I read something about, like, we took giant leaps after this, took giant leaps. We had, we had to go, we had taken our daughter out to California and we, we were visiting his sister, staying with her. She took us to the airport, whatever, but she mentioned Dolores Cannon and Dennis was like, oh yeah, I've heard of Dolores Cannon. I've read, I told you about her stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but we were in religion. A like long time I, would, ago. I would never have read that. When we were had our religious background, I would have been like, dude, stop. Reincarnation? No. Other life. One life. One life. 
So I, I'm like, no wonder I didn't hear you. I blocked everything. If you question anything, I'm like, stop, stop, stop. We're not supposed to do that. So I'm like, Dolores Cannon. Okay. Came home, read the book. I'm like, shoot, how do I do what Dolores did? I, if she did it on her own, surely I can do this. You know, I looked up her course and I'm like, wow, there's no way Dennis is going to say, yeah, go ahead and pay that and do that. And so, and I'm a stay at home mom. I've been a stay at home mom. So, you know, I support in different areas, but yeah, he's the breadwinner. So I'm like, shoot, I can't ask to go to like, take this Dolores Cannon thing. So I found Candace, went to that immersion course, watched your stuff, read your book as I met you on the forum. And I'm like, they're having a thing. And then when, when I signed up and paid, Allison goes, you do know this is an in-person event. I'm like, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I said, hey, Dennis, would you like to? And he's like, sure, sign up. And I'm like, hurry up before he changes his mind. Hurry up before he realizes all the details, which is get there. And that's what we did. Yeah. So that was kind of even Dennis's first jump in. Into, at your big, into the big end of the pool. Yep. We yeah. Together. <laughs> yeah, what what was incredible about that? Ex well, again, it was the Yaka experience. It, there was so much on the way home. The trees were green, <laughs> alive, the, like I never saw before. the The clouds were giving me information, like, <laughs> um, yeah. Geesh, I mean, I. Uh, I had to swallow hard lots of times and like even the feeling now is palpable. Um, it was incredible to say the least. I'm actually feeling it right now. I'm feeling a little woozy right now, connecting with your energy as you're telling the story. That's yeah. kind of weird. And I know it's not hunger because I just ate. <laughs> um, so briefly tell us how your four kids, where they are now. Like, did they stay in the Mormon church? Did they come out with you? How, what happened with the four kids? And are they experiencing the things that you're, are they following along with what you're now learning? You know what? They'll they'll probably see this this video. They're all doing their own thing, making their own choices, and that's the the place we told them we wanted them to be. Like, it's important for you to make your own choices. If you choose to stay in this space of going to the church, do it, and we fully support you. And if you choose to do something different. Like do what, what drives you and we're there. Like there's no mistakes that you can make right now. Just do what's important for you, your kids, your family. And that's where we wanted them to be. Like, we're not going to judge you. We hope that my number one thing was love me at my level. Mm. Love me, love me where I'm at. Love, love dad and I, where we're at right now. You never know what'll happen down the road. And so be with us there. And that's where we where we left it with our kids. And we have some awesome relationships. Christina did really good bringing up our kids with the catchphrase of listen to listen, not listen to talk. And so they ask really good questions. Except, you know, they just they're breaking away from this religion, right? Some Everything that goes along with it. Some of them are. And so they have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Which is good because we had questions. And as Still and, have questions. And we wouldn't take away any of what we learned or any way that we raised them. We see it now. Once you get past the anger and the frustration of feeling betrayed and programmed you can see the value it it placed in your life, the part it played, the yin and the yang, everything, the balance, it's all there. And we can see beautiful things now. And so to share that with our kids, like whatever you choose, just be there 
That is so lovely. It's amazing. Because it isn't about raising your children to be mini me's. It's about raising them with integrity and to be able to stand in their own truth because they have their own contract as well. And they have their own purpose Mm -hmm. and mission. And we're not here to live their life. So that's beautiful that you can open the door for them to stay in the church, not stay in the church, do whatever they want. You know, it's the only, I wish that, um, I guess I wish I would have awakened when my kids were a little bit younger because they were probably late middle school by the time we started investigating all of this. And so they were raised pretty religiously indoctrinated, but I think we were able to kind of undo a little bit of not undo the good things of the church. And that's not what I mean, but just to allow them to question, like you said, to raise them, to question, to uh, come to their own conclusions, not to follow in our path, but to, to carve out their own path. But, um, mine, mine were not raised that mine were always like, Oh mom, you believe such weird things, you know? (laughs) And, um, and yet, and yet as adults, like, my daughter's amazing at sensing energy and all this kind of stuff. And my son's just got this, um, the way he perceives the world, you know, it's like, it's interesting, you know, and they're both very wide open with me, but they didn't grow up with religion. They didn't have any of that, but I always, I listened and I bought 100% into whatever they said or whatever they were interested in, you know, whatever they read, I read, whatever they watched, I watched. And my husband would look at me and he's going, you're, you're reading, what is it called? Romanticy? romantic fantasy novels. Oh yes. I read those because then I, uh, they can you, converse. Yes. With your kids. I mean, yeah. it's, it is, that's, what's important. And I've got time to do my thing, True, mm-hmm. but that's, that's the connection and it makes it so much stronger. I just, I love that you guys have that, that establishment with your kids. That is beautiful. And you brought up a good point, Christina, which is that you discovered the purpose of all of that. And I, I did too, which was for me to have the language and the verbiage and the understanding to be able to help others bridge the gap between religion and and uh, greater spiritual understanding. If I didn't have that common thread with people, I wouldn't be able to talk about it. And they go, oh, you're woo woo. And you don't know even know what it's like because you never were in the church. Right. So I can talk about that and help people to understand that it isn't about throwing it all out, but mm-hmm. take those beautiful pieces and then expand on them. Mm-hmm. Um, so what did you understand that your purpose was? What, what what was the reason that you went through all of that? Do you know? Well, I think one would be the, just the bond that our, our little family has. It, it create, I mean, in, in the church family is your center, you know, around Christ you, but your family is like the big thing. That's how you get to heaven. You know, you go as a family And so I think the connection that that created in our family, I mean, I would not trade that for anything. We had some standards, you know, where they, they knew certain things were not good for your body and it was good to do this. And if you dress appropriately, you're not, you know, creating things that you don't want from the opposite sex. Like there, there were values and we can see that. And we're like, so there's good things. So even when our kids question, we're like, yeah, but there's these good things. So you grab your good stuff and you do that. And so that I feel like, and then there's that part where I think, wasn't it you that had your session and you'll be able to assist others when the time is right. So yeah, and just like you guys have done, you're preparing a soft place for people to land when they decide to jump. Mm-hmm. And where where would we have been had Christina not decided to read your book? Where would we have been, Allison, if you decided not to write it? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. It's vitally important. I think the religion also played a really big part in um, paving the way for living a life of service. And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It's not just inside a religion. It's outside, like you guys are doing with the treehouse. It's incredible to give people a soft place to land and to help be the light to show them an awesome way to live an alternative way to live yeah to open open up to that growth 
that they may not understand, Mm -hmm. even with our kids, because I read what you had said and you had connected some dots. I then was able to connect even more like my daughter's little, little man was sick one night. And I'm like, yeah, you remember how, how it feels to just put your hand on your stomach when you aren't feeling good. And I would not have thought about this in church, you know, oh, go get a blessing, go rely on somebody else to do some healing. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have discernment to know when your little man needs you. And so place your hands close to him. If he can't, like if he's fighting you and not wanting you to touch, just place them close to him and just remember that energy connects you. And he's connected to you because you were gifted him to raise. So the connection is there already, but, but applying the hands-on. Yeah. But I was able to read your book and then connect and I'm like, oh, okay. 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 I'm seeing how religion connects to this completely new place of (laughs) connection. Like, what does that look like? And I overthink it like crazy. I'm, I like make it way crazier than it needs to be. And the pretty intense creator. I think myself out of so many things. <laughs> so that's any- awesome. Those connections. I right. think it's important for people to know no matter what the obstacle is in their life, that there is a purpose for that. We wrote our contracts for a reason. It's a divine, beautiful mission. And if we can learn to reframe these, what we would immediately want to describe as negative events or why did I have to go through all that suffering or what was the purpose of losing all those years or whatever, when you realize that it made you who you are now so that you could go on and do the rest, whatever it is, the rest of your life has planned out for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, It helps people to look at things that way. So thank you for sharing that. And now I want to get into some of the juicy stuff with Dennis in terms of his experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, before Dennis says anything, I just want yeah. to note this. It's been doing it the whole entire time. Every time Dennis speaks, the tree, the tree the, flashes. Are you seeing that? I the was lights, noticing. Like goosebumps. The lights behind us. Like that's why I turned my head because the lights have been flashing. And I wrote down the time because I'm going, what is going on here? From from the moment Dennis started speaking, they've been they've been like pulsing, I noticed that too. Pulsating. And I don't know if it'll come convey through or if it's just a just a an artifact because the speaker's so close to the monitor and it's doing its thing. But no. I, I noticed yep, there, go, there yeah, it goes. Yeah. So every time. Yeah. That's so interesting. It's um, breaking me. <laughs> well, I was looking at it thinking, I wonder if the people that are watching are going to think that's distracting as it does it on every episode. No. I haven't noticed. No, this it. is no. the first time I've ever seen it happen. So yeah. <laughs> Cause you guys are, y'all are electrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't but, remember this or not, but remember he vibrates at a higher level. That's his higher self mentioned. And so did Aka. His vibration is so um, much faster or higher. I don't know how to describe it. He runs at a higher level that Aka kind of described it as a, just a movement where he can't see it. He's like, I can't see your aura because you're, you're going too fast. Your, your vibration is too fast. I can't see it. Wow. Well, that's what they say about quartz crystal. Quartz crystal is actually in a in a basically a fluid state, but it's vibrating so fast that it looks like it's a solid state. So it's yeah, that's what they say about quartz crystal. So yeah. wow. Yeah. So you you Dennis have had some amazing <laughs> spiritual or metaphysical experiences that to me, no wonder you doubted what was going on in the church or what was real and what wasn't, because it was just mind blowing. So take a couple of those and and share with our audience oh. <laughs> let's see which you know one? which one i'm talking about too <laughs> fishing at night and down at the <laughs> okay among others okay <laughs> um well my heart's pounding for some reason okay so I had a friend that was going through some marital problems. And so he called me, it was about 11 o'clock at night and said, Hey, I I just need some, some counsel. So if you can help me out here, um, I will, uh, I'd be greatly appreciative. So 
yeah, I went and got him and he's like, I know a pond we can, um, we could go out there and go fishing. So that's what we did. We got there about 1130. We're fishing. It's a, it's round about 11, I think, it, or 12, it was 1203. We're sitting on the dock. We're on two different sides of the dock. And this is a small dock, probably 10 by 10. And I'm facing north, northwest, and he's facing north, northeast. And I'm fishing, and I, I, something caught my eye, and I looked up like it was a bright star, and I'm focusing on it. And I don't know if I said anything to Joe, but we both see it. It's almost like we spoke, but without words, because I could have told you that I said something to him, but he says to this day that we didn't say a word. So we're, I, I'm looking at it and this bright light starts to move, but as it moves down the, and this was a beautiful, just as dark and black as the sky can be with just beautiful stars out. But this star was really bright. And as it starts to move down, it, a line behind it lights up. And I'm focusing like, what is this? And it stops and it turns and it makes a slit like a check mark in the sky. And the, the sky opens up. I mean, like you're opening an envelope. And the light out of this was intense. Brighter than the brightest light I've ever saw. But it didn't illuminate out of the blackness, the border. It stayed within the confines of that cut, that flap. And as Almost as fast as it opened up, it sealed back. And our fishing trip was over. <laughs> it was time to go home. We didn't talk. I dropped him off. I, I don't even think I said bye. <laughs> um, I don't remember the drive back to his house nor my house. What happened that night, I have no idea. I Believe me. Google has no idea what happened either. So <laughs> I, I looked. <laughs> he has looked for years. Yeah. He searched. <laughs> has anybody else experienced this? Yeah. I get the light thing though. Cause so I saw a UFO um, come right down in front of me and my son and the light, when you describe the light, um, that was how the light was where it, it light comes at you. It has rays and it comes at you. And this was just light, but it, was I, it not, I don't know if you'd say it's being sucked away from you, but it didn't it didn't come out at you. So I get the light thing. It's kind of like the Truman show. If I recall correctly, what your higher self said, basically you're seeing on the other side of this reality. So you bumped into the wall of the world and they let you peer behind what was there, like Truman opening the door at the top of the stairs. Yeah. So what do what do you remember about that description about what it was? Yeah, that's what it was that that <clears throat> this life that we view is not reality. It's not reality. It's a place that we can come basically and and be tested and tried and and experience life the way we want to, but that's not the whole of it. There's so much more. And why I was shown that, I, I don't know. Time will tell. I I am certain of that. But but uh, there's lots of other things. I, I, I don't think I live a normal life. Maybe I do, but maybe people have crazy experiences. Normal. Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what normal is, but. But was there any other instances that really stood out to you that were? Or any recent, any any recent happenings? Yeah, like what's happened since? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's new? Right. 
Let's start with Candace and Dolores. <laughs> so Christina's, she says, hey, I want to read you something from Candace. This was last night. From Candace. And I said, wait, let me guess. It's from Dolores. And she goes, oh, it's so sarcastic. I'm just, <laughs> I'm like, no, really. <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty good guess, I'm assuming. And she's like, well, yeah. So anyway, she reads me this. And the first couple words when she starts, my heart, like what happened um, at your guys' retreat, started. Like, I was having a hard time breathing. My heart felt like it was, and she's a couple words in. I'm like, whoa, babe, like, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on here. But, you know, uh, the same stuff that happened at the treehouse. Um <clears throat> So if anybody, if anyone's interested in that post, just to give reference, uh, Candace Carl Goldman, founder of BQH and quantumhealers.com, uh, has a Facebook page, of course. And yesterday she had a download from Dolores and did some channeling uh, of a message that Dolores wanted to bring through. So if you want to read that, you can go to Facebook, look up Candace Carl Goldman. I also read that yesterday as I was sitting in the parking lot of Publix waiting mm -hmm. for you. And um, I felt in a in an interesting space. I just felt in an interesting space as I was reading that. It was com almost like time standing still or something. Uh, and Dolores was sharing about what's coming and what a wake up call that humanity is about to have. So yeah, that was a really good. So what were you feeling when you, when she was reading that to you? Like, what, did anything come to mind? Yes. Can I put it into words? <laughs> I think you guys know um, because you're in this, trying to put experiences into a language is almost virtually impossible. You can get kind of close, but yeah, I, I'm, I was, I was floating above my body. I was, uh, um, this. I, I have a pressure point in the back of my skull that migraines stem from. And that place was um, pulsating. Like a heartbeat. And I could feel that. He's like, feel this seriously. And I put my hand exactly. And yeah, you could feel it. That's the gods. What do you call that? The, the it, Back by the pineal gland, maybe? The, that, because I had yeah, that. There's, there's, a, there's a specific spot. It's got a specific name. Yeah, The yeah. god's breath or something like that. Because I've had experiences in here with, remember? With the group channelings, yeah. and you guys yeah, yeah, were yeah. telling me it's where God's where they breath. plug you in in uh, Matrix, in the, the Matrix, Matrix or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's offset. It's to one side of okay. The spinal cord attaches to your the bottom of your skull, and it went through to where my penile gland is, <clears throat> and was like so intense. Um, and just pulsated and pulsated and pulsated. What's interesting about our day yesterday, it was so full of, of things <clears throat> that happened, unexplainable things. But we were, I pulled up this TikTok, interestingly enough, and there was this device that you could plug into a plant, different plants, and they have, they vibrate at different, right? And sounds and this, all these sounds like, of all the trees and plants around me are during the time I'm reading to him. So I'm hearing the, the words as clear as possible, but all of these sounds were so intense and yeah. So I, my heart's full. I'm, uh, I can't hold tears in. I'm a mess. I'm an, <laughs> I'm an absolute mess trying to like, Wow, what what is this? It it was a incredible, beautiful experience. But mm -hmm. I, you're reading a a blog post, a Facebook post, and what is this? It's black and white, you know. Yeah. Well, um, we are filming this the day after the eclipse, and so it's been a really powerful weekend. Uh, some would say we've gone through a portal, or we were able to step through a portal if we wanted to yesterday into the singularity. Mm. And um, 
So yeah, there have been many times, especially early on in your mm -hmm. journey, when I would read a Facebook post or read an email or something, and he would get completely lit up, Yeah, head would hit the counter and he would just start channeling or vibrating or whatever. So the words have a frequency, whether it was Dolores's frequency or the frequency of the words or both um, that were, you were obviously feeling. Yeah. It's, it's really, you know, for me, it was, and and I would, I would liken it to you too, Dennis. It's, it's, it's getting the body used to that in that powerful of an energy influx. Um, you know, I mean, for me, it was almost like having a, 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 a an epileptic seizure because my body would just like, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. It would just lock up and I would, tears would start flowing and, or I would just be so filled with gratitude and I would just start giggling because it was so intense. And so, yeah, so it's just, and, but over time it, 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 it settles with the body to a point at which it just becomes natural. And then you really get the full blessing from all of it because it just, you know, there's so much that's being infused and there's so much that's being put in but you you're getting just a you know a surface scratching of it but in time it just unlocks you know so i uh, i mean i like i i couldn't like at your guys's and i keep saying this because this was huge and in the perfect timing right so we were we were stuck to the carolinas to experience this right but and her reading that um and having all this happen around me was so intense and she was done and i'm like oh my gosh feel this and i'm like speaking to my higher self my guides the god whatever like give this to her <laughs> someone has to be grounded i like take it because i'm greedy i i kind of want that but um no but <laughs> for her to experience it like oh my goodness she my knees it was incredible I, I can't put it into words but all night long all night long i had this ringing in my ear i get up this morning the ringing's still there i go and shower and get on with my day and it slowly fades away but wow um yeah that was probably the most recent any interesting dreams this weekend for either of you? I've had weird dreams, but I wouldn't call them interesting. So what about rising water dreams? A lot oh. of people are having rising water dreams. And we talked about this in the October collective <clears throat> message last week. Do, have you guys ever experienced that? No, um, not yet. No, mm -hmm. I have dreams of just chaos um like multiple times I'll I'll have and like really detailed dreams about just chaos in the streets and in cities and you know how, how do you feel when that happens in the dream that I'm an observer that this has to take place that it's almost not exhilarating but there's an excitement of this has to take place for humanity to, to get to a place that they can start to heal. Hmm. Right. So we, we have this excitement uh, on the other side, we, we, cause we anticipate what's coming on the other side. So we know we have to get through this. So once the chaos starts happening, we know that it's in progress and we will get there, but what's been happening for years, many people are seeing that chaos out in the future. And so it's a waiting game. And we're kind of like, can we get the show on the road? Because <laughs> once it starts to happen, then we know we, we're on the downhill slide, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, we're not happy about the chaos, but we're happy that we're on the way to mm -hmm. uh, magnificence on the other side. Yeah. On the other side. Oh my gosh. If I can put that into words. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, agreed. So how are things going in your life, Christina, in terms of um, you are a BQH practitioner, you are a quantum connect practitioner, which is another modality that Candace um, has incorporated not too long ago, which is quick, uh, rather than going into uh, the whole hypnotic trance state, it's more of a conscious. Tell us about what that looks like for you and what are you seeing in your client sessions? Um, you know, I'm still, I'm still, I still feel really new. It's, I find myself like 
go ahead, jump out there, Christina. And then I'm like, oh, like all the people that I know were, were religious. And so finding people is harder on my side and then putting myself out there and kind of selling myself. That's always a little bit challenging, but the people that I've connected with, um, yeah, they're, I haven't noticed anything major and I think I'm still working on me and my own like. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me help. I know this question for Christina, but she is going to say things like, I'm not good enough. (laughs) I don't know that I can. And so I'm going to, I'm going to brag because Um, he is a beautiful practitioner. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And just about everyone, actually everyone, I don't know of any, has been like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I don't know if anyone else could have done this for me and your voice and the way you, and so she's going to (laughs) say that she's probably, you know, whatever, but um, she's incredible and is able to guide people where probably, well, the people that come to her are supposed to come to her. And it, it comes out in the in the session for sure. And and I know it will come when it's time to come. You know, I have that knowing that I'm trying to just lean into, just know that when it's ready, everything's gonna fly. As far as um any like similarities in sessions, I haven't had a lot of those, but I think that's because I'm still learning the transitions and it's fun and uh, each one's so different each person is so different and um the quantum connect i i find it super fun and i think i find it even more fun because of my own experience in when it was taught to me and how i was used as the guinea pig i'm like wow okay i believe Mm. i believe Mm-hmm. Whatever this is, I believe, because when Candace first introduced that quantum connect to me, um, it was during her immersion course, and she used me as her guinea pig, and because I was worried, I'm like, hey, I've had a couple people try and give me a session, I get nowhere, <laughs> I like have this connection problem, and I was worried, I was worried, and so she's like, oh are you, what'd she say? Are you shy in front of people? I'm like, eh, not horrible. I mean, I'm not extremely comfortable with a bunch of new people, but she put me in front of the class and did that quantum connect with me and taught me that this is all about your imagination. You have to let go and not overthink. And once I did that, it, I knew I'm like, I get it. I get it. So for me to take somebody through a quantum connect, I am solid on it. I completely have the understanding. I know you can get there. So So tell us what that looks like. How does a quantum connect? What does it look like? And how does it differ from a traditional hypnosis session? So, yeah, with quantum connect, thank you. um, It's you want to connect with your higher self in a way that's quick. You don't want to think about what you're getting ready to say. Your whole goal is to stay ahead of your conscious mind. Um, keep your, stay in your subconscious by the first thing that comes to mind. I want you to speak it. And then if you have a thought moment, that conscious mind comes in like, oh, that can't be a flying hamburger. That's, there's no way that's a flying hamburger. But your, your subconscious is like, shut up. I got this. Like it is a flying hamburger anyways. And it's a beautiful way to connect because you're going with speed. And as you go with that speed, things unfold. And before you know it, you're like, whoa. And Dennis said, when I took him through it, he's like, that was like a meditation. Like by the time I ended there, that was, that was I feel totally relaxed and like, I just got that. And 
kind of like a guided meditation. You're walking them through scenes or whatever with rapid fire questions. And, you know, this is a psychological principle because uh, we have ink blots and all of these other ways to make people bypass that conscious mind by giving me the first thing you think of when I say this word or whatever. So it is a conscious consciousness principle to mm-hmm. bypass that left brain and get to the underlying issues. And so, yeah, people have remarkable uh, aha moments through this, what seems so easy and fun and, and they can do that on their own sometimes too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're eye opening um, to, I, you know, I did one with um, in my practices, I did one with a man and he said, you know, I said, well, maybe it didn't answer all your questions. I was still new at it and he didn't get where he wanted to go. And he goes, the thing is, I told you one, my intention, but reality was, I just didn't know how to word my real intention. And I'm like, Mm. oh, and when you break it down, I'm like, wow, I think you got all your answers. He's like, hmm, maybe I did, but you know, it was, it was just one of those things where you don't always realize the words you speak aren't necessarily your true intention. And the healing takes place oh, yeah. in that too, like your last one. Yeah. <clears throat> she's still, she's still going through some healing that was like, wow, beautiful. So the healing even takes place. I, it's such a beautiful process of quick speed and getting connection with the higher self. And even, you know, yeah, you go in with your wanting to connect to higher self, but others can come in too. And I've saw that happen. And it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, quick way to tap in. So. Yeah, and we know as practitioners that the client always gets what they need. Even if you don't realize it in the moment, they always get what they need. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. Are you doing those on Zoom? Yep, I have. I've done some in person, some on Zoom. And how can people find you? Quantumhealers.com. You can go there, look up Christina Brady, and that's where you can find me. That's so. beautiful. So what final messages do you guys have for our audience, particularly those who might still be contemplating this um, expansion from a religious paradigm? Um, you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> So I think uh, a couple of things. <clears throat> I don't know if you want me to go first. I don't live a normal life. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, my sister said <laughs> the best definition of going to church. She said, do you know what the best part. To- the best part about going to church was for me? I'm like... <laughs> Or you? No, I I don't know. Well, it was going out through the back door and getting in my car to leave. (laughs) Now, I would concur. (laughs) So you don't even have to go out the back door. Go out the front door like I did. But um, there's a place in all of us that, that you search for truth a complete truth and a brick and mortar an empire might tell you that the only way that you can achieve the best life is through them and it's a fallacy because eventually fiction will eat fiction Mm -hmm. there's no other way to look at it the The truth will always come out and some may be ahead of the curve so that like you guys have set yourself up in a place, a soft place for people to land when they know not where to look. You guys are doing an incredible job. So there will be people coming out of religion and in droves. And for all of us, it's incumbent, I think upon all of us to be in a place that we seek complete truth 
And what is truth? I, we're still searching for it, right? Like you guys had your your conversation a couple weeks ago on that. What is truth? But to be there in a place where you can catch them when they fall. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good place. And don't be afraid to walk out. We've got a friend, a son-in-law, that went to get a deep tissue massage. And the lady working on him uh, was using Reiki. And she was, she was a member. Yeah, she was a member. And she said, don't tell your mother I'm doing this. <laughs> So what is truth? Truth means that that healing practice is actually working on people. That's truth. Religion would tell you that's witchcraft. So um, the English language, language in general is pretty tainted. But. Yeah. I'd also say it's important to stay in a neutral place, mm -hmm. you know, because we get stuck in, in our we get stuck in the past, we get stuck in the future, and we don't think then the same. And if you can stay in a place of neutrality and just live in that moment, that's that's the best place to be when you come out of a space like the religion. Just, just be in the moment. What does that feel like? It feels good or it feels bad. And then make your choice. But don't, because of all of this, or because of what might be, because that's where we get lost and we forget that what we need to be looking at is just the now, just right now. What's going on? What do I feel like? And do that. And maybe you're supposed to stay, maybe you're supposed to go, but being okay in this space is, that would be my advice. Right. Thank you for that. That was beautiful. Go ahead, Dennis. That's good. I just want to say one more thing. I, I, we're probably trying to wrap this up. Um, Will, thank you for uh, helping me speak to my my higher self. One thing that it said to me is, you'll be, I can't remember the words, something like, hold your tongue and you'll know what to speak time that's needed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think sometimes we speak too much and the value isn't there so but it, it that all it all <clears throat> it all culminates around that what you were just saying as far as truth where does truth reside truth resides in each and every one of us and that truth is different my truth we were just talking about this we were just talking about this earlier my truth is my truth your truth is your truth but we come to that neutrality place <laughs> that place in the middle where we both can find common ground and that's where really where we're going i mean that's that's what we're trying to get to because you know to have opposite sides of things doesn't matter whether it's a church or whether it's whatever to be on one side or the other is that's that there's we that isn't where our consciousness that isn't where our being that isn't where our existence is meant to be our existence is meant to be connected together in that in that beautiful common space so right and i wanted to elaborate on something you said which is you know if somebody is happy in the church and you know they're having all their needs met and they're finding god and and living their best life go for it my concern is where people have doubts and they ignore them i it i think we're moving into a place and time where we must live in integrity and we must stand in our truth. And so to deny yourself and to ignore your feelings and your internal knowing is going to just wreak havoc more so than it ever has. You're crumbling away at your soul every day that you deny who you truly are and live under somebody else's paradigm. The other thing that I think people need to be careful about is abandoning one ship and jumping on another one because, <laughs> because it's so easy to just, when you we don't want to be in that uncertain space. It's very difficult for us to manage uncertainty and, and not knowing what's next for us. And so we feel like if we leave this one thing or jump out of a marriage and we get married right away, you don't give yourself time to figure out what your next steps are. And then you just end up in the same predicament because you haven't learned the lesson. So it's not about 
getting out of this paradigm and this one's better. It's about, you know, figuring out who you are and, and what do you need to do? Mm-hmm. Where do you need to go? What needs to take place? Um, well, in addition to that, once, once you do step out, you know, into that place of neutrality and so forth, um, you know, I think what we all come to find is that you're always in that space of you're not in one camp, you're not in the other. You're really, you're out on, out on a limb, you're out on your own. Like you, there's, there's not the guardrails anymore. There's not the, you know, and so to find community where people accept you exactly where you are and just lift you up in positivity doesn't have to be anything else, but just you yeah. say, you know, I'm eating a hamburger today. They go, go for it. And then they're like, I'm no longer eating the hamburgers. I'm doing this. And you're like, go for it. You know, like those people that just <laughs> whoever, however you're showing up, they just are in acceptance because you're literally no longer, you don't have that kind of community telling you what to do. Mm-hmm. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Like, it's just, uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. I think the most valuable thing is to place yourself in integrity and in that neutral place, mm-hmm. there's always going to be polar opposites that that place and they have their part. The yin and yang is part of our existence. And I think not just ours, but the universe, you can't have light without darkness. And but when you live life with integrity, like complete integrity, then you can move fluidly in neutrality mm-hmm. through life and not get stuck. It's when we try to pretend to be something that we're not that will eternally give us trouble. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very well said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gosh, it was such a pleasure to talk to you guys. You just light up the screen. You're a beautiful couple. We thank you so much for being with us today. And I want to thank everybody else for watching Out on a Limb podcast. We thank you so much for joining us. Please leave your comments. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any comments for Dennis or Christina, you can leave those in the comments or reach out to to Christina at quantumhealers.com and look for her name under the practitioners list there. And thanks. And until next time. See See you guys. guys.